Good morning. Good morning. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. It is a pos it is approximately 7:35. I am going to wait. Let me go ahead and turn this off because y'all already know. Um, I'm gonna wait till a couple of you get on here because this is a very serious live. I don't just get up like this and get up on here early in the morning. It's very serious. Let me turn this phone completely off. Okay, praise God, praise God. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning, Autumn. Good morning, Sonia. Good morning, Jamario. Good morning, Rose, Jan, Linda. How you doing, girl? Janae, Janae, Kita. I hope I'm saying it right, Teresa. Good morning, Patricia. Praise God, praise God. All righty, so a lot of you are on here. Um, Okay. All right. So, good morning, Lenore, Doris, Connie, Rebecca, Sharika. All righty, Mary, and everyone else that is joining. Okay. So, this is very serious. Oh, my God. Woo. And I waited a couple of days to do this because I had to wrap my mind about what had happened. So, y'all already know I have a past. Y'all know back in the day, 30 years ago, that I was into all kinds of things and I, I was incarcerated for two years. And when I was incarcerated, and I need to reiterate that so you can understand the magnitude of what I'm saying, um, the guards used to come get me to pray for them. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Right there in Lafayette Parish, Lafayette, Louisiana, um, they would take me out of my cell to pray for the other gods and they used to call me preacher woman. But that's also where I caught the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, in cell forward. I'm very serious. But I remember a couple of things. Um, one night I was sleeping and my hands were so much on fire until I was I was shaking and I was putting them in between my legs, you know, like by the thigh part, just to, you know, not be derogatory. And they were burning so bad. And I didn't understand what was going on because I was a babe in Christ apparently right and the next day i was also in toastmasters so the next day this guy that was over toastmasters i'll never forget his name his name was gerald and he said deanna god anointed your hands last night and i literally started crying because i didn't know what was going on but god had anointed my hands but prior to that i had a couple of dreams and i remember them so vividly so i want to reiterate those dreams the dreams, one of them was, there was a lot of demons around me. And this woman was having a baby. She was a, um, she was a Mexican woman. And what happened is, as she was having the baby, there were demons coming in. And we was like in a desert. It was so weird. And she was having a baby. And the thing is, she was having different color babies, like white, black, and Canadian. I'm serious. She was, and I was standing by her. So what happened is the demon was coming through the windows and she grabbed my arm and she said, help me, help me, please. And I'm looking like there's a big demon coming in that window. What am I supposed to do? And the dream vanished. So after I asked God, I said, God, what did that mean? He said, I called you to the nations to intercede, to inter be an uh, intercessor, to be an apostolic leader so that you can bash and, and actually, let me tell you something. He said, you're going to be a battle axe against the demons that's why i go through so much warfare a lot of people don't understand that you know at first people used to say oh something wrong with her why is she going through this and i used to believe them i was like okay something wrong with me am i really called or whatever no the higher you're anointing the greater the battle period in the story i don't have to explain that right come on somebody hallelujah so let me continue so what ended up happening is the second dream is that it was an army marching and we were in the desert again. And these were warlocks. Listen to me very carefully. This is a very Rima word. These warlocks were so powerful that they were standing in attention like this in the desert. And they were flying over my head. And I never forget what they said. They said, what are you going to do, oh child of God? And at that time, I'm a babe in Christ because I was 27 years old when this happened. Okay. When I was incarcerated. So I'm sitting up there looking like, okay, what is going on? And so when I woke up from these dreams, I asked God, I said, God, 
I'm not understanding. He said, you are a general. You are a soldier. You are to lead my people. You will die for my people. You will be a martyr. You will lead them. You will guide them. You will protect them. You will be strong. You will you will be a mandator, meaning that I will mandate you to equip them, to strengthen them, to say things that will be hard. And because of what I say and do, that's why I'm attacked. But that is my portion, said the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So the other dream was we were we were um all on horses, okay? And then when we got to this certain point, there were nothing but swords, beautiful swords. And apparently whoever was in charge, they looked at me and they told me they said, "Get off your horse and go pick a sword." So I went and I picked a sword and I did like this. And then the dream went away. And I asked God, I said, God, what does that mean? He said, you're a general. You will lead my people. So I reiterated all that that happened almost 30 years ago to tell you I hadn't had a dream like that for 30 years until two nights ago. Mm, Y'all better catch what I'm saying because this real. This is not a game. I said, God, what are you saying? I saw so many demons. They were after Christians. They were looking like us. They were looking like they were um, human, but they're not human. You guys, can I tell y'all something? <laughs> oh my God. I've been having insight since I was 12 years old where I can see demons. I can see through people. That's why a lot of people don't like me because I see right through you. Don't come, don't come trying to play no game. I may not say nothing at that moment, but I'm peeping game. It's the vision of sight. It's not ours. It's the prophetic sight. My daughter has it. My grandson has it. I found out my grandson has it this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm actually here at my daughter's house. Our home is being prepared. And long story short, we were sitting in the room the other night, and he said, Grandma, look. I said, I look. I said, what do you see? I couldn't see it. He said, Grandma, look. And that's when my daughter told me he sees things. I said, I knew it. So each generation, the side get heavier. I have it. My daughter has it twice. Wait till y'all see her coming. She's coming. Got to pray. And then my grandson has it. What am I saying? The dream was so intense. People of God. <sighs> this is not a time just about, let me tell y'all something. I have to reiterate this. It's not just a time for business making money, being an entrepreneur, that that's great because because we need money to survive and we need a, a means to do it. And to be honest with you, I think preachers have forgotten that. I didn't know that when I first started. I thought, and I'm just going to keep it real, oh, the people of God are going to take care of you. And I'm not saying that you're not supposed to sow. But I realize also we're supposed to do our part because we have gifts as well. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah, somebody going to follow me this morning. So in that dream, I kept seeing these high demons and they were coming after me. And I, I was, I was doing like the matrix, like Neo. I was, I was, I was, I was, but he said, my, everybody's not strong like you. He said, I need my people to be strengthened in this hour. People of God, I'm telling you right now, it is so imperative that you disconnect from this world. This is not where you belong. This is not where you will stay. I'm telling you what thus saith the Lord. God says that this is the time to rise. They are rising. The enemy is rising. He says now it's time for us to rise. And there will be a great battle. Oh, there will be three battles. There will be a civil war. Oh, yes. That's why they're pushing it. It will be a civil war. That means race against race. I'm sorry, y'all don't want to hear it, but and, and you can't pray and stop it because it is written. There will be a second war against Christians, persecution. They will kill us. I'm I don't know how else to tell you, because some of y'all think we're just gonna go up in the air and whatever. That's not reality. It is, but not after some things happen. Come on, somebody. So, yes, I do believe in, in the rapture. The third battle would be kingdom against kingdom. It already is. This is the battle that's now. They're trying to lure you in with seduction, with heresies, with error, with lying, with money. Let me tell you something. I just didn't make 
that deal. For you, for you that don't know, you know, I signed the deal and um, I'll be collaborating with Usher's mom. She is totally different. She is not with, y'all know what I'm talking about. Beautiful person, beautiful spirit. I trust her. So, and trust me, I prayed because guess what? Mm -mm. In this hour, you better pray about everybody and everything. And if it don't line up with God, walk away. I lost a lot of money in Abbeville, Louisiana. I don't care about that. I mean, I care, but I don't. You understand what I'm saying? Excuse me. You have to be so obedient in this hour. You can't be about money, cars, husband, wives, because you know everybody. Y'all just like live in this world like, like it's not going to end. Like martial law is not coming. Like new world order is not coming. Like slavery is not coming. It's already in Nigeria. Do you understand? They just don't, don't don't show y'all on TV because they keep feeding y'all on TV. Like everything is fine. And 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 even the presidential election. Y'all notice I don't speak too much on that. They're all together. So why would I speak on it? I don't trust any of them. And some of you are going to backlash me because, oh, y'all not going to like this part. Everything black ain't right. They're all together. Why do you think they chose her? And I and I'm please come for me because guess what? I got a whole dissertation on her and what she do. This woman put more blacks in jail in California for nothing. So you mean to tell me y'all want to trust her as y'all vice president? You do that. Go ahead. Good luck. Don't play with me because I ain't never been one to play games and a lie just for nothing. You must go by the spirit of a person, of a man, and of a woman. I don't care what this say, because this could lie all day. I don't care about credentials. People make up credentials. People embellish their resume. So I don't want to hear all that. Show me their spirit, said the Lord. I don't want to hear what you're talking about or what you pretending. And, uh, and, and most of y'all going along with, oh, she's a black woman. The devil comes in different colors. Yeah, I say what I say, and come for me. I, I'm on one, so so I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please do it. Mm -hmm. This is not a time to be gullible, to act foolish. You better have the spirit of the living God. And if you think I'm playing, they're almost ready. Let me say it again. They're almost ready. New world order is almost here. Martial law is almost here. What are you going to do when they ask you to renounce Jesus Christ? When they ask you to put a chip in your body? What are you going to do? Because most of y'all think this again. One thing I've noticed throughout my 52 years of living, people don't believe until it's right in their face. And now you don't have time to make a decision because guess what? Fear is entering and, and, and now, oh my God, I don't know what to do. That would not be your excuse, especially those that are up on here, because God says, I'll send people to tell you the truth. Now, whether you receive it is up to you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I, I love you. I love you all enough to tell you the truth, because let me tell you something. The warfare I go to is intentional. Oh, I found out. I've been found that out. that's intentional. They've been trying to break me for years because ever since I started talking about the last president and, of course, all the elite. What you think they're trying to do to me? But I'm going to tell you what I told my father. We were sitting outside. I said, Dad, when the day comes and I will die, I said, don't cry for me. Cry for the ones that don't believe. I said, because I'm going to be with my Lord and Savior. And I will finish my course. And I ain't scared. Bring it. Because to the day I die, I will tell the truth before God. Because guess what? You know how many people will be lost, destroyed, dismayed if I don't? My mandate is just to tell it. You ain't got to believe nothing. But I am mandated to say what well, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Because one thing I know about God, the spirit of God will hit you right where it's supposed to. But now if you have not the spirit of God, you're going to, you know, go into this delusion and illusion and reprobate mind until God says, Open your eyes. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm preaching up in here.
God is real. The spirit of God is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So playtime over with. It's been over with. This is my advice to you. And I, I said with all, and I thank God that he was allowed me to come and be by my daughter and my grandson. It's almost over with. Spend time with your family. Forgive people. Yeah, they do some ugly things. Forgive them. Pray like never before. Use wisdom. Use judgment. And when I say judgment, judgment of being of what is good and what is evil. Wait for confirmation. Do not be wishy-washy. Say what you mean and mean what you say. God says, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Quit fronting. Quit going after just money because most of y'all just money hungry. These preachers on here, God going to get you. Because you sit, you sitting up there embellishing your pocket and, and your... <laughs> And you're not saving souls. The heart of God is souls. God don't care about what you're driving. Because guess what? At the end of the day, and it's going to sound cold, we all got one thing we're taking with us. And that's a bass, a, a box. Oh, you want to call it a casket? That's fine. You ain't taking nothing with you. Hallelujah. Whew. So I pray that y'all understand what time. Thank you for the numbers and don't let people into the greatest warfare that I have ever encountered which let me knew that something big was coming not just on the end where you know i'll be doing this or that but this is spiritual too don't ever get it twisted don't ever think that your career or what you do is not connected to your assignment come on somebody it's all connected. God is not going to just place you and say, hey, have fun and do this. You are on assignment. You are always on assignment. And the problem is most people are getting off the wall for that money, that honey, and whatever else. Never get off the wall. Never stop fasting. Never stop praying. Never give up with tears in your eyes, with fears, because sometimes it's going to get scary. Oh, I'm, I'm transparent. I don't have time for games. Sometimes a lot of people going to leave you thinking you the wrong one. And you're you looking like, I ain't even did. What's up? <laughs> don't need let it roll off your back and trust in the Lord thy God. And don't, don't worry about who leave you, who stay, and what they have to say. Because to be honest with y'all, I didn't got bolder. You thought I was crazy. Y'all Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Because if anything, the devil just made me, he, he sharpened me. You see, I, I, I'm reminded of Job. When Job lost everything, his family, his friends, and his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? Because if, if this is the God that allowed that, but wait a minute, God said, Job said, should I not receive good and bad at the hand of the Lord? Come on, somebody. Because you see, we always want good. It ain't going to always be good, people. But God wants to know how you're going to stand in that stuff. Will, will, will you crack? Will, will you say things? Will you do things? Will you be things? Will you transform? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And everybody don't like truth, and that's cool, too. So, God bless you. God keep you. I love you through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I have not been on here because I have been super duper, <laughs> y'all know, busy. But God, I'm I'm get, I'm starting to get back. Um, I'm gonna be coming back on today. But that dream that God had, when I woke up from that dream, I was like, I hadn't had one in thirty years. I know it's on thirty years. That kind of dream, y'all know what's coming. I mean, it was so intense. All I heard was, "Be watch, be careful. They're here. They look human. They're not." This is the time where you need to ask God, God, give me my spiritual eyesight. God, give me wisdom like never before. God, give me discernment like never before. 
And the main thing, I got to say this even on a personal level. Yeah, I went through a lot. I think y'all know that because I'm not I'm not fake. Never let them steal your joy. <laughs> Never let them break your spirit. Hallelujah. Because once he break your spirit, they break your confidence. And once they break your confidence, they break your faith. You see, they're all interconnected. So the enemy knows what he's doing. If he can get you to, to feel like you're a failure, if he can get you to stop believing, faith cancels out fear and fear cancels out faith. So you have to, and, and, and connect it to confidence. You have to trust God. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Though he allow these things, yet I will trust in him. Though people mistreat me, yet I will trust in him. Though they lie on me, I will trust in him. That's your portion, men and women of God. And to be honest with you, I'm about to hit you before I leave. Most of your accusers will be men and women of God. The sinners, they are they, they, they doing what they're doing. <laughs> It would be your same brother, your same sister. Oh, Y'all ain't ready for me. The people, David say, it, it wasn't a stranger that came against me, but it was a person of my own lions. You, you remember when Absalom came after his own father? We're in those times. Forgive them. Hate for hate, that's not real. That's not cool. Don't do that. God says, pray for your enemies. And he says, when you pray and your ways please me, I'll make your enemies be even at peace with you. He said, I'll be a friend to your friend and an enemy to your enemies. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. So God bless you. God keep you. I'm praying for you. Just because you don't see me on here as much as I used to. I'm still praying for every last one of you. I'm still standing. I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to sound crazy. God has made me so strong that even when I want to quit, excuse me, there's something that rise up in me. You can't. You can't stop because guess what? It's not just about you. Your assignment, you think it's just about you? No. There are people watching you. There are people praying for you. There are people that connected to you. There are people that need you to stand and to be strong. Hallelujah, because it makes them strong. That's our portion. That's our mandate. We have not come into this world just to make money and have a job and live foolishly. We were on assignment. You came from heaven to, for, to an assignment. And we know what God told me to tell you. Do your assignment at any cost. Let no one kill your baby. What is your baby? Your gifts, your talents, your anointing. And it matters not who it is. Because guess what? The enemy doesn't come as a stranger. The enemy comes as a familiar face. As someone who loves you. <laughs> Y'all get the drift. So God bless you this morning. Stay strong in the Lord. And y'all know what time it is. Rule our soldiers for that is truly who we are. Walk like it, talk like it, act like it, be like it. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. God bless. And, and I'm reading um, Miss Burnett. And I hope I'm saying your name, Zanez Burnett. She says, I'm trying to prepare my family, but they're not listening to me right now. I had to learn this too. <sighs> you love them so much, you're trying to like, hey. No, no, no. Your portion is to stand in the gap for them. Pray for them fast because, it, girl, they will frustrate you. You'd be wanting to, you know, you know, lay hands on them. <laughs> Let's be real because you love them so much. Mm -mm. You're not God. Your position is to petition to God. And then God will touch their heart. God will touch their soul. God will touch their spirit. God will change their mind. God will change their heart in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, sister. You'll wear yourself out trying to convince somebody. Because if they ain't listening to God, you know they're not listening to you. Hallelujah. So God bless you. Good night. I mean, look, I didn't say good night this morning. <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a blessed day. Make it a blessed day. All right. Bye-bye. Share, you guys. Share, tag.